What's up guys, Rogue9 here. The question of what is better in Rainbow Six Siege, armor or speed, has been thrown around basically since the launch of the game, and now that Jaeger is being changed from the iconic speedy boy he has been for over four years to just an average old two speed two armor, the question is once again on many players' minds. Could this upcoming change actually make the man stronger? Could this intended nerf backfire spectacularly and create the ultimate defender? Well, I've run some tests and crunched some stats, and I do believe that I have the definitive answer. My analysis around these questions was structured into three main topics. What speed advantages do three speeds have over two speeds, and how does this play out in game? So, how much is that extra bit of speed really worth? Then, how much more damage can a 2-speed really tank over a 3-speed, and will it make a difference for Jaeger? And finally, is there any evidence in the performance and pick rate data that Ubisoft have been sharing over the past 9 seasons that can give us an insight into how speed and armor ratings affect the power level of the operators? As always, timestamps in the comments sections can help you navigate the video, but let's just go through these sections one by one. Quantifying the speed differences between the three different operator classes is relatively simple. We can test this by running a fixed distance and then calculating by what percentage the time taken increases from armor class to armor class, and hey presto, if we use three speed operators as a default, then two speeds will be 5% slower and one speeds are 15% slower by comparison. So if you run for 20 seconds as a 3 speed, then 2 speeds will take 21 seconds to run the same distance, and for 1 speeds it will take 23 seconds. Neat! But what does this actually mean when playing the game? Surely saving 1 second when travelling long distances won't really make that much of a difference in most rounds, right? Well, the advantage that speed offers in Rainbow Six Siege is not really about travel times. I made a video a while ago explaining why high ping is not an advantage in R6 and a number of people misunderstood the point I was making and started telling me that they experience peak as advantage all the time. But well, those are two different things, aren't they? Because the fact is that in a fast-paced one-hit kill game like Rainbow Six Siege or any other low time to kill online shooter, Pika's advantage will most definitely be a factor and will continue to be a factor in the foreseeable future, it's just that high ping doesn't actually help you. And as much as a 5% speed advantage might seem trivial, during a peak when literal milliseconds count, this can and does make a difference. That is where the true power of Rainbow Six 3-speed operators comes from. I ran a few tests to try and measure the potential disadvantage that Jaeger will experience once he goes down to the 2-speed 2, 2 armor class, but I have to admit coming up with possible trials that would provide any meaningful results was a bit tricky. All of the following experiments were run on a server where both players had a ping of just under 100 milliseconds, and the idea is that this moderately high ping will provide us with decently realistic results when testing for Pika's advantage. In this test, we are simply comparing how long it takes Jaeger to cross from one side of the Oregon lobby to the other, and as you can see, even at such a relatively short distance, the minor 5% difference in speed does have an impact. But that doesn't really give us much insight into the advantage you will get during the peak itself. To test this, we went into the basement and found a spot where both Ash and Jaeger are exactly 3 meters away from an obstacle, and I replicated the same peak both on the regular servers and the test servers, and what I found was quite interesting, and bear with me here, because it gets a little bit funky. If we synchronize the two clips from Jaeger's perspective, so that both start moving at the exact same frame, and then we synchronize each of Ash's clips to the respective Jaeger clips using the round timer, so synchronize Ash regular server with Jaeger regular server and the same for the TS, then we end up with both of Ash's clips synchronized so that in both of them, Jaeger starts his peak at exactly the same time. Now if we step through this synchronized footage, as a 3-speed, Jaeger gets a full view along the wall in front of him after 25 frames. The 2-speed Jaeger takes on average around 1.5 frames longer to reach that point. In this specific trial, it was 2 frames. And that makes sense. Slower Jaeger means slightly slower peak. 
Now, from Ash's perspective though, the three-speed peak lags 11 frames behind what Jaeger sees, so 25 frames until Jaeger can fully see Ash, and then another 11 to 36 until Ash can see the middle of Jaeger's head, while the two-speed peak basically appears around the same time for her, so the lag is only 9 or 10 frames. What this would suggest is that at the same ping, a 3-speed can build up a slightly greater peaker's advantage compared to a 2-speed. In our case, with both players at a ping of around 100 milliseconds, that advantage looks to be between 1.5 and, and 2 frames in the specific test we ran. But beware, these results should be taken with a couple of grains of salt, because there are a few limitations. The synchronization of the Ash and Jaeger clips had to be done via the in-game timer, so the results are dependent on the timer being synced for both players, and I have no way to guarantee that this is the case. A further issue is that when characters sidestep in Siege, their head does not always move in a smooth motion. Because of the stepping animation, we occasionally get these breaks where the head stops for one frame while the body catches up. I had to discard several tests because this one frame pause in the movement would mess with the results depending on when it happened. So the summary is that I do think I was able to demonstrate experimentally that Pika's advantage can be slightly greater for 3 speeds versus 2 speeds and that makes perfect sense because the faster your character is moving in an online game, the greater the distance that you can create between where your character is on your local client of the game and where the ghost of your character is on the server. And that means that greater speed in Rainbow Six Siege will result in greater gunfighting abilities, all other things equal. But does this theoretical advantage really translate into elevated in-game performance? Impossible to tell from these kinds of tests alone, and that is why I also added on the statistical analysis of what is probably hundreds of millions of rounds played over the last few years. But we'll get to that later. For now, we know that speed is a definite advantage and that losing his 3 speed status will be a nerf to Jaeger. So the next question is, what about the additional armor? Will this possibly provide enough of an advantage to counterbalance or maybe even supersede the disadvantage of slower movement? Well, this is pretty easy to check. I've been gathering and analyzing Rainbow Six gun stats literally for years now, so it's really easy to calculate the additional number of shots a 2-speed is able to tank versus a 3-speed, since two armor operators in Siege take 90% of the baseline damage for each gun, rounded down to the nearest full point of damage. This table shows the difference in shots to down or kill between 3 speeds and 2 speeds for each gun, and since Jaeger is a defender, it is of course the attacker weapons that are of interest here. So if we go ahead and filter out the defender only guns, you can see that at close range the 2 armor rating is not really going to do much for Jaeger after the upcoming patch. Looking at the primary attacker weapons, you can see that at ranges below 20 odd meters, two armors can only take one extra shot to the upper body from IQ's G8A1 machine gun and Twitch's F2 assault rifle, and there is a brief window between 12 and 16 meters where the boss G will also need one shot more. And then of course there's also Jackal's PDW9 SMG, but that is it. And even for secondaries, it's not looking great. Only two of the four machine pistols and three out of 17 pistols will need that one extra shot. Even at max range, where the additional armor effect is enhanced a little by the weaker damage from each gun, you'll only have an advantage in 23 out of 57 cases. Rook plates will also help a bit, but again, the real impact is still inconsistent with only 20 out of the 57 weapons requiring one extra shot before damage drop off. I guess everyone is free to make their own judgement here as to how valuable the additional armor rating will be, but for me the case is pretty clear. The bottom line is that at the most common combat distances, two speed and two armor operators can only tank one additional body shot for eight out of the total of 57 attacker weapons, not counting the shotguns. If you were hoping to pick Jaeger after the patch and that you would be tanking one or two extra shots from all weapons at all ranges, then think again. It's just not going to happen. In almost all of the most common situations, you're basically going to go down just as easily as before, and there are no ifs or buts about it. 
So at this stage, we know that losing the speed will be a slight disadvantage, while the additional armor will not really be making up for that. But all of that is a relatively theoretical analysis, and that is where my last topic comes in. The Ubisoft dev team have been sharing performance insights for all operators with us since way back in Year 3 Season 1, so now we have 9 seasons over 2 years worth of actual performance and pick rate stats taken from hundreds of millions if not billions of rounds of Plat and Diamond level Rainbow Six Siege. That is a lot of data and despite the confounding variables we have to consider here, I do think that we can analyze these stats to compare the performance of the different speed and armor classes in the game. What I essentially did was to calculate the average win delta stats for each operator class during each season and then I also split the stats into attack and defense, simple as that. Now there are a few limitations to consider with this method. The charts that the dev team put out each season are really well made, illustrative and quick to understand, but they're not the most accurate way of conveying this info. Essentially there's someone on the comms team that has to read a table of stats and then manually build the chart, and then on the other end there is me converting the chart back into a table so that I can actually analyze the stats. Small inaccuracies are basically guaranteed here. And then of course there are also a whole shed load of confounding variables that are messing with the meaningfulness of analyzing the stats in the way I did, because an operator's performance doesn't just depend on the armor rating we are hoping to understand, but of course also on things like the guns, abilities and secondary gadgets that each operator has access to. So yes, there are a few limitations here, but nevertheless, if we finally look at the average stats, we can see that they paint a pretty clear picture. Three speed operators almost always have the best average performance, two speed operators almost always have the second best average performance, and one speeds are almost always the worst group of the three. If we filter out the attackers and only focus on the averages for defenders, the picture becomes even clearer. Three speeds across more than two years worth of siege games, possibly billions of rounds, consistently have the best average win deltas, whereas two speeds are pretty consistently second best, apart from the first half of year three where they were actually the worst performers. The fact is that all three of my analyses here paint a very clear picture and provide us with our conclusion. Jaeger is getting nerfed, there are no two ways about it. Losing the speed is going to make him 5% slower in getting around the map and will negatively affect his ability to win gunfights with Pika's advantage. Gaining additional armor will do literally nothing in most cases and, as if those two facts weren't enough, the stats from about a kajillion rounds of siege over the last few years prove that three speeds consistently perform better than two or one speeds. If you love playing as Jaeger and you were somehow hoping against hope that the devs might actually be accidentally buffing him with this upcoming patch, I have bad news everyone. It's a nerf. It's definitely a nerf. But maybe it's finally a chance for all of us to give Wamai a fair go. He's already had a really strong showing in Pro League since becoming available in the second half of the current season, so the best players in the world definitely seem to see something in him. If you haven't seen it yet, I made a handy video analyzing the strengths and weaknesses for both Jaeger and Wamai. Let me stick a link to that in the upcoming end card so that you can catch up if you like. Until then, thank you so much to everyone who stuck through the video until here. Things did get a little technical, didn't they? As always, I do hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.